What is this? What is this? Oh my goodness, yes. It's Ubuntu Mate running on Windows 10. How did I do it? It's a lot different than what people usually do, but I did it. Ubuntu Mate on Windows 10. Computers gaming retro gear devices can bring So how did I pull this off? It's a lot different than most methods, you would think. You're thinking in your head, oh, well, what's going on here? Everyone uh, knows about this. You can use uh, Xming. Of course, here's a little tutorial on how to run native Ubuntu desktop on Windows 10. Now, with this method, they use a program called Xming, and then they go through this process of going through Compass to set the settings, and then basically they run Compass and somehow it just automatically starts into the desktop environment. I wanted to try something different because I wanted to have the full desktop experience on Windows 10 using the Windows, you know, subsystem for Linux. There was a few things that kind of gave me an idea. It was back when going with X2Go, episode 374 of the Linux Action Show. In this episode, Noah goes through and gives us some basic step lines here on how to run X2Go on a DigitalOcean droplet. Now X2Go is a little bit different than your typical remote desktop solution. Basically it runs a session on the server. Normally with the remote desktop environment you have to leave it running and then use something like VLC, you know, to remote desktop into it to run the machine. With this, it runs on the back end of the server, allowing you to have a full um, X session running. So what I'm going to do to kind of prove that this is actually running on here, let's go to HTOP. For some reason, HTOP gives a false reading on the CPUs. It's really not that bad. For some reason, idle is actually 50%. It's, it's really weird. I don't understand it myself, and I don't want to understand it. And we're going we're gonna to crash this, because you have to have bash running in your PowerShell to make this work. So let's go ahead and just exit out of here and you're gonna watch this freeze up. Oh, it's done, I've killed it. Cool. So let me go ahead and now that this crashed, unfortunately, I think it's gonna lock up now. Yep, I'm gonna have to force kill it. Ah, oh, there we go. It determines something's wrong here. Terminate it. Well, I guess I'm gonna just have to end that process because it's, it's completely locked up. Okay, your first step of course, you need to have, you know, turn on the Windows 10 developer mode. We're just going to go ahead and go into our settings here. We're going to go to security and updates. Now go ahead and search for Windows features. Ooh, there it is right there. It's going to go ahead and load this up and right down, uh, let's see, it's somewhere in here. Ah, here we go. You want to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux beta. Go ahead, check that box and go ahead, click OK. It'll go ahead and install it for you. And once you're done, open up your PowerShell and just type bash. Now we are in the Linux subsystem here. There's a few steps we need to do to kind of get this up and running. Uh, when I first had to do this, I had to run for, you know, install it. I had to run the LX run forward slash uninstall full because I screwed up my first installation and I had to reinstall it. So if you ever need to reinstall it, I'll leave these notes here in the video description so you can go ahead and take a look at them. So this is how you would reinstall it if you need to. But the first thing you need to do, the dbus, you know, it requires in it to run, so you need to make it kind of ignore that. So I've got this little command here. You just go ahead, copy, and paste that into your terminal, and press enter. Our next step is we need to now modify the sshd service. Let's go ahead and we're going to edit the config file. Go ahead and enter a password. And we're looking for a few options in here. Very important. Remember to change the port number to anything but 22. So I chosen 2269. One of them is right here, is this user privilege one. We want that set to no. And then another one we want to set is 
public key authentication. Here it is, it's right here. Public key authentication to no. And we want password authentication to yes. Once you're done, go ahead, control X out of there, save your changes, and you're good to go for the next step. The next step, you're gonna have to use every time you come into Bash. So get used to this one. And this one just basically restarts the SSH service. For some reason, it doesn't automatically start. There is no init and there is no systemd. So because you can't have them run automatically, you just need to restart it like that. Another thing you want to do is go ahead and run this command. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. Paste that in there. Press enter. Comes the fun part. We need to go ahead and install X2Go on our main machine. So go ahead, go to the X2Go website, link in the description, and download MS Win version here. Go ahead, save it, and install it. Once that's done, we're ready to move on to our next steps. There is install X and X2Go. So go ahead, take the commands from the video description I put in there. There's a lot of them here for the X2Go and X2Go servers, you know, install here. Go ahead, paste that in there, and continue on with all of these steps all the way until you get to sudo apt-get update. Once you get to that point, you're ready to open x to go Now, before you continue on here, you need to know what your IP address is on the local network. For mine, it's 192.168.1.2. Let's go ahead and just kind of show you, because you're gonna create a new session. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Go to session, new session, and we're gonna go ahead and enter in our information there. But I'm just gonna edit this session because I've already got it put together. So we go ahead, put our host in here our login name, and our configured SSH port 2269. We're going to change this to Mate to make things a little bit easier. To make things a little bit smoother, let's go ahead and go to Connection and change this. It'll be here at first. Change it all the way up to LAN. It'll make the colors a lot better. And we are now just about ready to go. There's still one more step. Now go ahead and open your Windows firewall. We're going to go ahead and click on Advanced Settings. And in Advanced Settings, we're going to go to Inbound Rules. We're going to create a new rule. We're going to allow it for, we would just want a port. We just want to make that port work. And we're going to do our 2269, next, and allow the connection. Click next. And I just go ahead and leave all that checked. Next, give it a name, something like that, real simple, and click finish. Now we're officially ready to go, the moment of truth. Go ahead and click on our new session here. It's going to ask us for a password. If first time you run this, it is going to ask you. If any prompts come up, just go ahead and hit yes. Um, because I've ran this before, it wants me to restore my session. I'm not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and start a new one. And now we wait. Moment of truth. Fingers crossed. Oh, something's happening. And there we have Ubuntu Mate running very natively. And here we are, a full Ubuntu Mate desktop. We can go ahead, look at our folders and files. We can go ahead and, for example, open up the terminal. Feels just like Linux here, doesn't it? It is running very, very natively. We can also, if we want to, in the future, change our desktop environment so we can run more than just the Unity desktop. We can run whatever we want with X2Go, which is really, really convenient. We can go and Use this calculator, open up Firefox. See how my web page looks on here. It should be an interesting test. Oh, well, web page is loading pretty good. Can't play audio, unfortunately. Oh, scrolling is a little chunky. Okay. Interesting. Cool. We got our LibreOffice. Oh yeah. Yep, here we go. LibreOffice running good. Yeah, sweet, huh? There's our config. Just kind of randomly choosing apps to kind of see what's working, what's not. So far, everything's working. It's really nice. XChat, yeah, neat. Um, graphics, oh, it doesn't come with GIMP. Thunderbird Mail, ooh. There we go, we've got email. Change some settings here. Let's go ahead and find, ah, appearance. Here we go, now we can Kind of customize things, make things a little different. Yeah. Ooh, I like that green. Hmm. Cool. 
My favorite one is, of course, clearer looks. I love clear looks. It is such my favorite. And we can connect to the network stuff. Public FTP. Neat. I wonder, I wonder how, how a video would play in here. Let's try that. Okay, so VLC won't run because there's no POS audio server running. This might be something I'll look into in the future. I would like to get that running. That'd be kind of neat. Ooh, that would really be neat. And get some sound in here. Screensaver. Ooh, screensaver settings. Okay, they're working. Uh, what about the control center? And let's see what's going on with this control center option here. want to see what the command is. Oh, okay. Monte Control Center. That'll work. Let's go ahead and paste that in there, and we'll see what out. Okay. Couldn't register accessibility bus. So now receiver will I possibly cause include remote? Okay. Ah, oh, okay. This message about security bus blocked. The reply, the reply timed out, expired, or the network connection was broken. Okay, so some things need to be worked on here, but at least this is a start to something to... A new world of possibilities. What backgrounds we can do here. Do, do, do. How about a pretty flower? There we go. That's much more pretty. I like that. <laughs> well, we're going to try this other web browser and kind of see if the scrolling is a little smoother. Shot well. Yep, it works. Neat. System tool. Disk analyzer. Uh, well, that makes sense. It isn't real. It's not real Linux we're running on here, so... I can understand why some of this stuff is being a little weird. Uh, take screenshot. Okay, grab old desktop. Take that screenshot. My pictures? Nope. Uh, take screenshot. Failed. And then there's like this. This icon's a little screwy. Show updates. Okay, so the update manager doesn't work. Oh, there we go. Okay, no such directory, but let's go ahead and try... Try enter.com here. Yeah, well. Actually, scrolling is much better in this browser than it was in Firefox. Nice, 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 nice. I like this. You might be asking, what is the point of all this? Really? I just wanted to do something a little bit different than how other people are doing it. I just wanted to toy with it. I've never really thought this was possible. I mean, I feel like I'm right. Basically, I am. I'm running this on my machine. It's just I'm using a weird a weird way to do it than how everyone else is doing it. Yep, there's Mate. I just wanted to see if I could pull this off. And I'm very surprised that it works. And I believe that this is a good step. I would like to see some other people start to play with this and maybe make this a little bit more. Take out, there's a, I mean, there's just some little, little glitches in here. Just some little ones. Clear up some of these little bitty glitches. And I think all is well. This is, this is neat. I like it. Let's go ahead and log out. End our session. Bam. We're done. We can close X to go. We're all set. We're ready to go. And once we're done, we can go ahead and exit out of our bash and exit our power terminal. I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope somebody goes and plays with it, and maybe some future development will come because of what I've discovered here. I, so far, I know I'm the first person who pulled this off. I googled all over the place. Nobody, nobody has done this, according to Google, but now I have, and I hope somebody else does and plays with it and does something with it. I hope this was a fun little adventure. I hope you all enjoyed. This has been Anthony from Antware, and from this time and every time on, folks, keep on clicking. This is Anthony from Antware, signing off. In the config file, oh shit, I gotta go back. Oh, fuck me.